Hey hires, so welcome to lesson two. Before we start, I just want you to complete this starter in your study tutorial jotters. Now make sure you are doing these um, questions because you need to be able to consolidate, okay? Now, question one, what homologous series do fats and oils belong to? Question two, what two reactants are involved in the making of a fat and oil? And state the ratio of the two, okay? How many of one reactant do we have compared to how many of the other? Question three, what type of reaction is used in making fats and oils? Question four, explain why fats are solid at room temperature. And then question five, two parts to this, is this fatty acid saturated or unsaturated? C21, H43, COOH, and then B, which fatty acids contain more carbon to carbon double bonds? Okay, is it C24, H47, COOH, or is it C40, H77, COOH? And I want you to explain why, okay? So pause the video, do the questions, and then once you've finished, unpause it, because I'm about to go over it. Right, first one. What homologous series do fats and oils belong to? They belong to esters. Yeah? That's a homologous series. They are esters. Remember, they are known as triglycerides. Yeah? But they belong to esters. Hey. Right. Question two, what two reactants are involved in a fat, uh, making a fat and oil? That is glycerol and fatty acids, okay? And you should know it, it's a one to three ratio, okay? Sorry, finish off glycerol. It's a one to three mole ratio. So one mole of glycerol to three moles of fatty acids. What type of reaction is used in the making of fats and oils? You should know that because in order to make esters, it is a condensation reaction. Remember, you can't say esterification for this one, okay? Question four, I'll come back to, okay? Question five, uh, is this fatty acid saturated or unsaturated? Now remember, you need to know your uh, general formula for saturated fatty acids, and it is that. Okay, so if it follows that formula, it's saturated. If it doesn't, it must be unsaturated. Okay, so it's got 21 carbons, so N must be 21. So two times 21 is 42. Add one is 43, which is what we have. So this here must be saturated then, yeah? Um, B, which of the following uh, fatty acids contain more carbon to carbon double bonds? So again, you need to apply that general formula to each of them. So if we did, that'd be C24, two times 24 is 48, plus one, that's 49. Okay, do the same for this one, C40. If it was saturated, it'd be two times 40, which is 80, add one, which is 81, okay? So they're both unsaturated. Um, because there's two less hydrogens there, that means there's gonna be one carbon to carbon double bond there. And because there's four less hydrogens, there has to be two carbon to carbon double bonds, okay? So, This one here contains more carbon to carbon double bonds. It is more unsaturated, okay? And we'll call this poly unsaturated, but I'll get onto that this lesson. Okay, so I hope, hope you did okay there. Um, question four, explain why fats are solid at room temperature. This is what your textbook answer should look like, okay? So, you're essentially making three points. So, fats are saturated molecules. State what that means, okay? So, uh, they contain carbon to carbon bonds only. Uh, this gives fats a linear shape, and this allows them to closely pack together, yeah? And because of that, you're going to get more, which obviously leads to stronger LDFs, 
that are harder to break, therefore you're having a higher melting point, and that's why it's a solid at room temperature. And like I said, SQA, the love a diagram, I love a diagram, okay? So make sure you get a wee diagram in there, okay? And you can see, closely packed together because of that linear shape, and you're getting more LDFs there, okay? And they're gonna be harder to pull apart. Right, perfect. Right, this lesson, so lesson two, the first thing we're gonna look at is testing for unsaturation. How do we test if a molecule's unsaturated? Now, the good thing is, you guys have already done it, okay? This is a NAT5 um, concept. It's all done through the addition of bromine water, yeah? So you're adding bromine Br2 over the carbon to carbon double bonds. And that's it. And just remember, uh, hopefully you remember the, res uh, the result, but if you can, don't worry. So the result, um, the bromine water goes from brown to colourless, okay? Or you can say what well, I tend to teach in that five, decolorises bromine water in the presence of a carbon to carbon double bond. Okay, so carbon to carbon double bonds, they decolorize bromine water. Now, this is a big part, okay? And this is something we don't really um, focus on at Nat5 that much, but it's so important and it is quite obvious, okay? So, and this is something you'll need to know. So the more bromine that is added, Okay, the more unsaturated the sorry, the more unsaturated the fat and oil is. Okay, and what we mean by that, if it's more unsaturated, it contains more carbon to carbon double bonds. So the more bromine water we're having to add to our fat and oil to decolorize it, that must mean it's got more carbon to carbon double bonds, okay? Now, you might think I've made a wee mistake here when I've said uh, the more bromine that is added, the more unsaturated the fat and oil is. Now, Obviously, I've taught you that fats are saturated, and for the most part they are, but you know in chemistry there's always that wee extra bit, okay? Now, some fats can contain carbon to carbon double bonds, and but just not many, okay? Because if you think, you, if you've got a fat and there's only one carbon to carbon double bond in that molecule, that's only gonna cause one kink, okay? That's still gonna allow it to pack closely together, yeah, you're still going to get stronger LDFs, um, but yeah, when we talk about fats, we tend to say that they're saturated, but just bear in mind that some fats can contain carbon to carbon double bonds, okay? Right, so what we're going to do now, we are going to do an experiment, well, we're, well you, you'll see what I mean. Now, we usually do this in class, but obviously you guys aren't in class. Um, I don't have access to the chemical, so I can't do it myself. However, I do have a wee animation here that I'm gonna show you, um, and it will be pretty much like doing the experiment. So what I'd like you to do, we are going to create a table. Okay, so get a ruler. And put the head 
then sulfatum oil in the top left, and then top right, volume of bromine water added. Okay, and that's going to have, oh you can't really see that, I'll put the units down here, that's going to have the units centimetre cubed. Okay, now the three fats and oils we're going to look at is lard, and hopefully you should know that's a fat, olive oil, obviously is an oil, and sunflower oil, obviously still oil. Now, Get that table done, okay? If you need to go back, pause the video, whatever, do that. Um, I'm going to take my phone and I'm going to show you my screen. And this here is the experiment, okay? So, sorry if my hand's a bit unsteady, you just kind of have to put it up there, I'm afraid. Now, we've got a burette here, okay? You all know what a burette is from that five. We've filled it all the way up to the top with bromine water. Um, we've got a, a stirrer base, all that does is just it helps stir the mixture, don't worry too much about that. And we've got uh, four samples, but again I'm only going to look at three, we're going to look at lard, olive oil and sunflower oil. So what we're going to do, we're going to click the, the lard, how cool is this, yeah, we've got a hand, we're taking the lard, pouring it in, now I, I know a lard is solid, just do it and we're pouring bromine water it keeps decolorizing until a point where it can't decolorize and we have two centimeter cubed of that so if we go back to our table our lard two centimeter cubed okay so we only had to use a little bit of bromine water now if we go back to our experiment go for olive oil Again, a hand comes in, takes the olive oil, pours it in, puts it onto the balance, and we start to add bromine water. Okay, so bromine water is getting added, it's decolorizing, it's decolorizing until it finally becomes saturated, where it no longer decolorizes, boom, it stops. Okay, so what is that? That's a 6.5, yeah? Okay, so we'll go, go to our table and that will be 6.5 centimetre cubed. And finally, the last one, we go for sunflower oil. B hand comes in, pours it in. How exciting is this? I love this, love it. So, takes it, pours it in. We keep adding bromine water. It decolorizes because there's carbon to carbon double bonds. It keeps decolorizing. And then finally, when all the carbon to carbon double bonds have added bromine over to it, it changes colour. So that is what, 8.5, yeah. So just going to balance, get my phone right there. It takes a while to do this. Half my time spent doing this. Um, oh, come on. Yeah, that'll do. Right, so what was that? Our volume was 8.5 centimetre cubed. So that's the table, that's the experiment we would have done. Uh, now, what we're going to do is just, uh, we need to do a conclusion, obviously, like what we would normally do. Okay, so conclusion. Now, Remember, saturated means no, oh, sorry, if I just move over here, then we go for the most saturated, the most saturated is lard, okay, so that's the most saturated, it's not fully saturated because it did decolorize the bromine water slightly, but not much, so that means we've got the least number of carbon to carbon double bonds, okay? Now, um, I'm going to introduce a new term, in fact, no, sorry, I'll do this part first. So the most unsaturated is, hopefully you see, is sunflower. 
oil. Okay, and that's because that contains the most number of carbon to carbon. I'll move that over. Carbon to carbon double bonds. Okay. So hopefully you can you can see that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna introduce you to a couple of terms. One well three terms, but one you already know. So if a molecule is saturated, it contains no carbon to carbon double bonds. Okay? Now the new term is if something's mono saturated, okay. We'll probably be able to work out what this means. Mono means one, okay? So if you're mono, sorry, scroll that out. Mono unsaturated. So if it's mono, it means one. And if it's unsaturated, it contains one carbon to carbon double bond, okay? And then the last one we're gonna learn I already spoke about it in the starter. It's poly unsaturated. Okay? And that just means more than one. Yeah, poly means multiple, so more than one carbon to carbon double bond. Yeah? So, sunflower oil decolorized the largest volume of bromine solution, which means it's got the most amount of carbon to carbon double bonds, and that must mean that the sunflower oil is definitely polyunsaturated. Yeah, the sunflower oil. And that's it. Okay. Right. What we're going to do now is we're going to put another subheading. This is going to be called the hardening of oils. Okay. The hardening of oils. So I'll make a wee note first and then we'll start talking about it. So we can convert oils into fats through the process of hardening. Okay, it kind of self explanatory, yeah. The oil convert it into a solid with hardening it, um, it, it becomes a fat, okay. And that that's just uh, it, just makes oils a wee bit more suitable uh, for them to be used as margarine, stuff like that, okay. Now, there is a chemical reaction for this, um, and the good thing is, it's already one you know, okay, from that five, or you should know. So, the chemical reaction used to do this is called hydrog hydrogenation okay now I'm going to highlight that I'm going to highlight hardening okay and I'm going to highlight hydrogenation because you need to know that okay now for you uh, for the few I'd imagine that has forgotten yeah hydrogenation is the addition of hydrogen yeah addition of hydrogen over a carbon to carbon double bond. Okay, uh, remember from that five, hydration is the addition of water 
Chlorination is the addition of chlorine. Bromination, the addition of bromine. Hydrogenation is the addition of hydrogen. Okay, and it's so important. Now, another important part of this is you need to know the catalyst. Now, we've already spoke about the catalyst to make an ester. Yeah, not a fat and an oil, just, just an ester, you know, a flavouring, a, a perfume or whatever. The catalyst to make an ester is concentrated sulfuric acid. The catalyst to break up an ester is sodium hydroxide. Now, the catalyst to harden an oil is nickel. Okay, and that's a catalyst you need to know. Okay, you can get asked, plain and simple, one mark question, what catalyst is used in the hardening of oils? Boom, nickel, nice and easy. But you need to remember it, obviously, so make sure you do. Now, just a wee uh, reminder, you, should, you could say. Okay, just a wee reminder of hydrogenation. Okay, I'll put that in brackets. What it is that we're actually doing is that we're taking a carbon to carbon double bond, we're adding over hydrogen. And remember, that hydrogen, the, uh, the carbon to carbon double bond will break into a single. That hydrogen will go there, that hydrogen will go there, and what you're left with. is a saturated molecule, okay? So hydrogenation is all about going from unsaturated, going to saturated, okay? So we're converting it. If we want to do a summary, I suppose, we are conf uh, converting an oil into a fat using a nickel catalyst okay so we're going from again I know I, I keep going over this but it's so important unsaturated an unsaturated oil to a saturated fat that's what we're doing there okay right now I'm going to go over one more bit and then that'll be us finished, uh, fats and oils, at least until we come back to soaps and stuff like that. But uh, we'll move on to proteins after fats and oils. But we've got one more bit to do. Okay. And it is going to be about breaking up fats and oils. Okay. So, let's just uh, reiterate what we've already spoke about. So to make a fat slash oil, we react glycerol and Three, yeah, remember it's a one to three ratio, three fatty acids in a condensation reaction. Okay. So to break up a fat or an oil, okay, you should know this. Yeah, because we've already we've done condensation reactions in esters. Can you remember how do we break up an ester? Yeah, have a wee think. How do we break up an ester? So, to break up a fat and oil, uh, we use a hydrolysis reaction. Okay hydrolysis reaction uh, and 
we would use a sodium hydroxide catalyst, okay? And this would, this leads on quite nicely into soaps, but we are going to come back to soaps. We don't want to com uh, compl uh, sorry, complicate it too much. So to break up a fat and oil, we use a hydrolysis reaction of a sodium hydroxide um, catalyst. Okay, so we summary. Love a wee summary. We've got our fat slash oil plus water. using our sodium hydroxide catalyst. Uh, obviously we're gonna hydrolyze it, okay, put it under reflux, and then we're gonna get glycerol plus three times fatty acids, and I'll move that over. Okay, that's the summary. Now, last wee thing, because uh, people always forget this. You need to know the definition of condensation, you need to know the definition of hydrolysis, because again, you can get asked, it was in the December assessment, okay? Why is this, uh, I can't remember the question, I think it was, why is this reaction, why is it weird that this reaction was a condensation reaction, something like that. But anyway, condensation is where you put two small, molecules and they react together, react to form a larger molecule, okay, and then the important part with the elimination of a small molecule. Okay, and now it is usually water. Okay, even when we're making a fat and a oil, we're reacting glycerol free fatty acids. Uh, that gives us a fat and an oil plus three moles of water. Okay, so it's usually water, but just bear in mind it's a small molecule. Now, hydrolysis. Um, that is the breakdown of a compound due to a reaction with water. Yeah, remember we spoke about this. If we split this word up, hydro means water, lysis means to break down, so hydrolysis breaking down using water, essentially, okay? So, that is us. Just to recap what we've done, okay? So we spoke about the testing for unsaturation, yeah, the addition of bromine water, you should know that from that five. What you need to know is that the more bromine water that we add that's decolorizing, the more unsaturated that oil or fat molecule is, okay? So that means it contains more carbon to carbon double bonds, yeah? We brought in two new terms, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. Mono means it contains one carbon to carbon double bond, poly means it contains more than one carbon to carbon double bond. Next one we did was the hardening of oils, okay? We can convert oils into fats through the process of hardening, okay? It's a hydrogenation reaction, and that means that we're adding hydrogen over a carbon to carbon double bond. What else is important, so important, is that we're using a nickel catalyst, okay? And then we finished it up just talking about hydrolysis. So what we're gonna do uh, for the remaining of the double is I'm gonna put up some questions on Teams for you to do, okay? Thank you.